Hey guys and welcome back to the channel. Today is going to be a quick video on how I do my export settings on Lightroom. This was requested in the comment section in my previous video so I just thought I'd make this uh, very quick video based on my um, first part series from the editing uh, tools that I use in Lightroom and I'm just going to use the exact same images and go through and show you guys how exactly I export. Now let's just assume you've gone through all of these images and you've really you know done all the editing. Let's just assume this is also even a full wedding. Obviously, these are cherry picked images, but uh, for argument's sake, you might have, say, a thousand images from a wedding, and now all you want to do is uh, export those batches and put them out, um, you know, on JPEGs uh, so that you can upload to a gallery and send it off to your client. How exactly do you do that? Great, so what you want to do is you want to press Command A. Now, this selects all of the images in your, um, in the bottom box here in Lightroom. And what you want to do then is just go up and then you go, go to the File button and then hit export. Now you can also hit um, shift command and E, but I just for easy sake just go file and, um, and export. Perfect. Next it's going to bring up a whole bunch of different settings here. So let's go through each and every one of these things. Cool. So the first thing you want to do is identify where do you want to export your actual images. Now for me, I usually have a specific folder that I always like to es export it to. Um, however, for simplicity's sake, you could literally just put it in your desktop and create a folder on um, you know, your, cl your client's name and then have all the edited images being dropped in there. So that's what I will do for now and I'll show you exactly what it is. So in this case, I want to have um, a specific folder. So I'll go choose and I'm going to create, a, go to my desktop and I'm going to create a new folder. Now here I'm going to put the client's name, so Ajay and Nisha Wedding. Now sometimes I like to use the word final, so I know that they're the edited version. Um, you can do based on whatever preferences you guys have, but for me and for argument's sake for this video, I'm just going to keep it as wedding. And then I'm going to hit create. Perfect, so now this folder is created on my desktop uh, with the client's name and the actual album as my edited images. So I'm gonna go ahead and select choose. I generally don't put it in a subfolder and nor do I add it to this catalog. So that's basically that, I'll leave it at that. File naming, now this is something that I do as a personal preference. I always go to rename to and I have custom settings and go edit. Now. You can copy down these uh, these settings here, but I pretty much just keep it as photo and then hit the sequence as 0001. So then, you know, whenever I upload these images, if there's say, you know, 892 images, it'll have them numbered from one to 892 all throughout the entire album. Sometimes you can even rename it to the, the couple's initials. Sometimes I do that as well. So J and Nisha, and I'll just press done. Cool, if we scroll down, video shouldn't be selected. Now, file settings, I always keep it to JPEG. That's the major, um, you know, output settings for wedding photography. I don't tend, I, in fact, I never touch any of these. Um, original just puts it in the raw format or the shot that it was actually taken in, so you don't wanna do that. Quality, I always keep it as 100%. For color space, I keep it as sRGB. And I never really limit file sizes. That basically means that let's just assume you've got a capacity on your Google Drive or your calendar or your gallery, and you want to make sure that the images are, you know, uh, max 1.1 megabyte or sometimes five megabytes, right? Now, in this case, I never do that. I just export at the highest settings. If you have it in your package that you want to, you know, you know, have two setting options where you have say a high res and a low res, then you can generally just adjust this based on what size you want. But in this case, I always just leave this unticked and leave the quality as 100. Now, I never resize to fit the image, so I leave the image as is. And when it comes to resolution, um, anything above 300 is perfectly fine, but 500 is perfectly like normal. And I leave it as pixels per inch. Now, you can do output sharpening, however, sometimes you might notice that there can be a bit of noise and grain on your images, so I tend not to do that. Include all metadata, so this is just the data that is saved from your actual image, um, such as you know, information like um, you know, ISO, your, um, the focal length, uh, the shutter, the, the shutter, the aperture, stuff like that. So any data that the image has, you want to retain onto it just so that you can go back and find it in you know, any search settings that you might have. Now, when it comes to watermarking, I never really watermark my images, but if you do as a photographer, that's absolutely fine. All you need to do is then hit the watermark button and upload your, um, your watermark to where you need to have it. 
and it should basically start positioning it across all of your images based on these preferences here. Now, bear in mind that this could be different for vertical and horizontal images, so you'll need to maybe adjust that uh, and take it from there. But for me, I never really watermark it, so I'm gonna go ahead and untick that. And then for post-processing, uh, I generally do nothing after export. You can show in the Finder, um, or you can open the images in Photoshop if you wanna do any further edits. Um, however, I usually leave it as, as nothing from then. And then once that's all done, and you've gone through and made sure that all of these are correct and uh, according to as your settings, you wanna go ahead and hit the export button. At the top left hand corner, it's gonna show you a progress bar. Now, obviously these are eight images, so these are gonna be a bit more quicker, but generally when you have say a thousand images, 5,000 images, this will take you know anywhere between you know, five to 10, 15 minutes, depending on the speed of your computer and how quickly you get these uh, done based on you know the specs of you know, your operating system. Great, now that they're all done, let's go and review. So you wanna just minimize your Lightroom. And this point in time, I'm actually recording, so I can't really open up my desktop, but I'll open up my Finder, go to desktop. And then over here, we've got a Jay Anisha wedding, which was modified and created today at 1.30, uh, 1 p.m. Double click, and you'll have all of your images there for review. Now you can go through and make sure that the edits are perfectly fine based on what it is that you guys had and make sure that everything's accordingly um, as per your standards and guidelines. And once done, then you can basically go and review and upload to an online gallery. But that's it guys, if you guys love this video, please hit that like button down below, comment, let me know what part of this video was great, what also you wanna see in the next Lightroom tutorial, and I will see you guys in the very next video. Peace.